The next um, author that we're going to have is Tamika Smith. I want to thank you so very much for coming back on. Again, it, you know, after I read her, her little contract, it was dated 2017. I'm like, oh, she just on last year. But it was two years ago. Yeah. Two years ago, two days ago, so December the 17th, wow. that you were on the, the program. And so um, we give God the glory and honor and praise. Now, the book that, again, I got a chance to read for uh, uh, my beloved Tamika was Shattering. The Glass House. But, um, you know, she's from the beautiful city of Durham, North Carolina. Matter of fact, I want to ask you a question. Did the other books come along after the first one? Mm -hmm. Okay. She has an awesome testimony of some things that God has delivered her and her, her boys through. You know, I thank the Lord God for what God has done in her life. Um, she has an awesome testimony. Anointed young young sons, anointed prophets that she is is raising. You know, these are the prophets. I had an opportunity to spend some time with them. I was like, which one of y'all back there a prophet? Which one of y'all back there like to put things together? You know, so I, they're very kind. You, you get an awesome job as a mother raising those young men. Yeah. So you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and tell us about these books. Why did you write these books? What happened? Mm -hmm. Well, it was when I was getting an order of protection that my, my grandfather was like, write down everything because it was a temporary order of protection. Mm -hmm. I needed a order of protection. Yeah. What was that for? From abuse, a, a domestic violence situation. Oh, okay. I was um, in an abusive relationship for five years. Mm. And in your home? In the home, in the comfort of my home. Wow. Like what, was behind closed, closed doors. Comfort, behind closed doors. Did anybody else know or just the family? The uh, inside. Yeah, uh, they knew his parents lived across the street, oh. and they were just co-signing with his mess Ooh. and manipulating me to think that that was love, um, and um, they were and to accept it in the church, and you know, with their titles and stuff, and it made me angry with God. It, uh, like, why would I go through something like that? Mm -hmm. And so, it was one night where I was coming home from work. And I could barely get the boys in the house. And he always would think that I would have some kind of work boyfriend. And so he was basically pulling me from the living room to the bedroom and telling me I'm going to die today. And so he banging my head across mm. the bathroom mirror. Mm. He's smothering my Because face. he was thinking he had to send somebody else. Right. And normally, a lot of times they do it when they say that they exactly. do it themselves. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, um, banging my head across the bathroom mm. mirror, smothering um, my face with a pillow. Jesus. And then it escalated to where he had his hands around my neck. And I'm just pleading with God, just help me. And just like you were saying, it was that voice. And the 23rd Psalms just came like it was a song to me. It did. And um, I just looked at him, and when he did lose his grip, it, I was just like, do you want your boys to see that you, you raising your kids like this? And it was then that I got tired. When you get sick and tired right. of something, that's when you will make a change. And when I left, it was the peace of God, like nothing else. And the journey, it wasn't perfect. We were in a shelter for 10 months and people would say, oh, you don't look homes, but how does that look? Mm. How Jesus. does that look? Ow. <laughs> because mm. God kept us mm. through it all. And when I did get the order of protection and I saw other women just feel empowered by my story, wow. God was like, I didn't just deliver you that yeah that pain gave you a purpose but it's to deliver Praise other God. people Lord, uh, and not to be ashamed of anything yes because god would get all the glory because mm -hmm. he raised the standard when yeah. i was getting flooded do not have a jonas right experience wow. mm -hmm. i i got you out of that situation to help other people right. and right. to tell the testimony mm -hmm. because is so many other people going through it. And it was a situation where my grandmother's um, friend, she's been in an abusive relationship for over 40 years. And she read my book last year and she said, thank you for writing that book. You finally got me out of wow. that cycle. Oh my God. So that's 40 powerful. years? 40 years. Right. So what did, how, what did she do to get out of it? She finally got sick and tired. And she left. And she left. Wow. She was married to and abused her. And he was for 40 he's, years. He is a pastor. So, yeah. wow. the assignment is so much bigger than me. And I give God all the glory. Yeah. Wow, wow. 
so and, and I think a lot of times the church does not talk about the church does not talk about what you've gone through no the church does not talk about this mm -hmm. they don't talk about the abuse I mean I, I know that the, the pastor's job is to feed the sheep okay and you, and and when you feed the sheep you know how you know, in your audience in your congregation you know there are some that are wounded you know some some churches or ministry does not walk in the fivefold you know they're not able to pick up who's what the people are going through and even if they do sometimes it is kept a hush hush mm -hmm. you know because there are many people that are being abused whether it be the drugs whether it be the, the sexual abuse whether it be the verbal abuse whether it be the physical abuse and so many women lose their lives i mean i i almost lost my life so your story sounds like mine i mean i wasn't in it that long mm -hmm. but um and and the work was nobody but nobody knew mm -hmm. so everybody called me a liar because it only happened between the four walls mm -hmm. and that's the only time it happened mm -hmm. so everybody believed that i was just lying on him mm -hmm. so nobody believed me but one day my neighbors heard me being beaten almost to death and I knew if he beat me up those stairs he was going to take my life but God but God so in the in your book the first book can we can I see that book in this book here shattering the glass house Tell us about this book. What is it? What is? Why did you write this book? I mean, I know you discussed you want to read, read somebody else, but what's in that book that you want your readers to know? In Revelation 12 and 11, it tells us. This is what it looks like. It tells us we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony mm -hmm. because, and a lot of people forget that second part because we love our lives not unto death. Right. Yeah, they and, leave out that part. Right. They leave out that I part. I think I might leave it out sometime too. <laughs> So I, it was important for me to write the book and to tell that testimony right. because it was other people going through the same thing. Mm -hmm. And not only women, but men came to me and was like, thank you for speaking up. I've been in an abusive relationship. I'm currently going through an ab abusive relationship, but by you telling your story, it empowers me mm -hmm. to get out of mm -hmm. the abuse. Yeah, and, and, you know, and what people, go, what people, I believe, the reason why they sometimes won't say anything because... You have that that other that spouse there, financially taking care of you. I mean, oh my God, I'm taking. Ooh, that's a whole nother level right there. Holding on because of the finances, you don't want to go through, so you deal with the pain. Mm -hmm. You know, so they deal with that shame. What does abuse look like? I mean, because when you come out of it, you can pick it up. What does it look like? Because you can, you can put all the makeup on, right. you, you won't. Right. You, can't you can dress it up. What does yeah. it look like? It, it, <laughs> Is controlling. Is controlling. He was checking the odometer of my car. Jesus. He was um, checking the cell phone records, even accusing me of my own family members. Sleeping with him. Sleeping with him. Uh, oh, he was. He was. He, he was, was jacked he, up. He was, <laughs> he was jacked up. <laughs> oh, he was. Oh, he was jacked up. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's, it's a. It's a lot of control. A lot of manipulation. Uh, it's an ongoing cycle where the honeymoon stage Was he bipolar? Uh, oh, yes. Bipolar. Oh, bipolar. <laughs> and, you know, I, I tell a lot of people, look at the family members, too, because it's his mother um, schizophrenic, and I didn't know it till later on. Mm -hmm. So when I tell people now, be aware of mm -hmm. the person. Be aware of how they try to, it's called, I like the couple, call them love bombs. Where they try to give you all this attention above normal, mm. pop up at your job, and he mm. would do that a lot. <laughs> um, oh, I had yeah. one. I had this one job. Where I had one. I was working, and um, I looked, and homeboy was literally on my job ducking, watching me. Wow. I was like, no good boy, that's not him. I mean.